Hello and welcome to another tutorial offering support to Open University students studying module TM111 Introduction to Computing and Information Technology. Today I'm going to give you an introduction to Google Sites and it is only a brief introduction. Google Sites is a very very powerful tool. I use it all the time. I use it to share extra resources with my students. It's ideal to bring together those external resources into a single portal and then be able to share it with lots and lots of other people. If you wanted to, of course, you could do it collaboratively so you could let others update your web pages as well. But before we look at generating a website, let's look at what's under the bonnet. And what's under the bonnet that makes it all work is something called Hypertext Markup Language. This was developed right at the very, very beginning by Tim Berners-Lee. He had a, a wish to turn uh, reports and documents that were developed at his research institution into something that could be delivered electronically online. So he developed a very simple markup language. So he developed a markup language which was basically switching a tag on and then you switch the tag off, where the tag describes some structure of the document. For instance, it might describe a heading, might describe a paragraph, or some of my, wor my words might need to be bold or italicized. I might need some lists and things like that. So he developed this very, very simple markup language. Over the years, it's developed so images, tables, and all the additional structures that we come to appreciate now on the web have been added into these sorts of markup languages. And currently, our current version of this markup language is called HTML5. If anybody is really serious about looking at this a little bit more deeply, you probably ought to consider downloading a free uh, editor, HTML5 editor, and getting yourself a good browser that supports HTML5. So you can actually do some of the advanced uh, tasks in the, in the module materials. But we're going to be using Google Sites, and Google Sites is a very, very simple website builder. Uh, recently, it's offered a new feature, uh, so it now offers the, the capability to build two different types of websites. You can develop what's called a classic, and very originally, the new one is called new. The classic is not HTML5, uh, support, doesn't support HTML5, but that doesn't matter. So the tags that we're interested in is going to support those. Uh, the new uh, website development tool does, is, does support HTML5 and again I would encourage you to have a look at it but a little bit later on. To access Google Sites we go to our Google Apps for Education, scroll down the bottom of the page and you'll see the, the link to Sites. When we click on that we're invited to create a new site or if we have sites already uh, constructed we can carry on editing those. So I'm going to click on the create button and you see again I get the option to create a classic site or a new site. Resisting the urge to create a new site I'm going to click on classic. Again there is another option to, to create a new Google site. Resist that urge for the time being. So we're going to create a new site. The first thing we're going to be offered is a template. Now before we get too flashy and too far ahead of ourselves let's just create a simple blank template. Keep it simple initially. So I'm going to keep the selection selected, I'm not going to change it, but then we are invited to uh, name your website. And for originality, I'm going to use my comp uh, Open University computer name there, and I've called my, my site RJM647 uh, 17J Demo. Notice as well, underneath all of this, the URL is being constructed. That's the URL that you can use to get access to your site. Don't worry about access to your site. Initially, they are created private. Later on, we'll open them up to other people. But remember, uh, the Google Apps for Education, whatever you create, is only kept within the Open University boundaries. Nobody on the outside will actually see your work. So once all that's completed, I, I click on the Create button, the big red button there. And if everything is unique enough, I'll be able to create my website. So I, here it is, my first page created. The name I gave it is shown at the top there. And there's various extra tags added in there already. You notice it's got things called the site map. Well, we haven't got a site yet, so we, that does, that's inappropriate. But we're on, the, we're on the home page, as it's called, of my site, the top level page. And there's a little pen icon at the top of the screen there, which I'm going to click on. And that will allow me to edit this website page so I can start adding content. And when I click on that, I'm taken, I'm taken into the editor and you'll see straight away, it's a very, very similar word processing type of editor. So it's got bold, italics, all that built into it, underlining. 
centering of text left aligned. It's got bullet points already adding, added into it. But I won't learn much about HTML if I were to use that editing ribbon, ribbon there. So I'm going to click on the little tag on the end, which takes me into the, the hypertext markup language editor. A little bit crude, but it'll still be quite functional. So here we are. I can edit the HTML here. Well, let's add some text. Not very original text, it's just chunks of text. It's uh, just some not quite random words, but words that doesn't mean much to us. You can see I've given it some layout. Um, I've given it some paragraph structures here and things like that. But if I click the button at the bottom here to update my web page, when I click on it, you'll see it just looks one continuous prose, one, co one continuous paragraph. By default, you see, I've got no tags in there, so therefore it's not going to recognize any of the structure. So let's start giving this some structure. I'll just create a few blank lines because the first bit of structure I want to put in is my heading. And I'm going to use heading level number two. There are six levels of heading altogether, but I really like uh, heading level number two. I think heading, heading level number one is a little bit too, bar, too big. So demo heading in here. And notice I switch the tag on and then I switch it off. The switch off tag is the same as the start tag, but I put a forward slash at the beginning. And my tags are enclosed in these set of angle brackets here. Well, okay, I've got a <clears throat> paragraph here. So I'll start, I'll put my paragraph tag on. Then at the end of the paragraph, I'll switch my paragraph tag off. And I'm going to have to repeat this all the way through my text. Now, okay, we don't tend to do this. This is where these editors come into great uh, uh, play here because they do save a little bit of time. But I just want to really want to sort of show you what we're actually doing here just to introduce some of the tags. Now, if I update my web page, now you'll see I've got a demo heading spelt badly uh, and then some the text is now shown in the correct format. So let's go back into here again and uh, let's at least uh, correct the word heading, shall we? Um, now, my next bit of structure is down here I want to add um, apple, pears, bananas. This is a list and I'm going to call this because it's not no particular order. I'm going to call it an unnumbered list and the, and the tag for that is UL. Um, I prefer to put my tags on in pairs uh, because then you don't tend to forget them. Now this is what we call an unnumbered list or an unordered list. So it's bullet points in other words. Now my list items are shown with the tag li and again they're switched off with the tag slash li. So here I'm just going to be adding my tags and making sure everything is in the right place and make sure I add the closing tag slash li and again slash li there. Now periodically let's just make sure we're doing things correctly. I'll just click the update and down here as I scroll down I can now see my apple, pears and bananas nicely shown as bulleted lists. This is an unnumbered, unnumbered list. Okay my next one I want it to be an ordered list. We, we use ordered lists when things have to appear in a particular sequence. So here I've just got like a start of a race. And we tend to say at the start of a race, ready, steady, go. So here I want to put in my, my text ready. I've just made a bit of a mistake there. I should have just put in my end tags. There we go. Add in my next one. Put in my end tag. And put in my next one and my last end tag and don't forget to close the ordered list tag as well. There we are. So we've now got an ordered list. If again, if I click update and have a look, you see we've now got one, two, three as an ordered list. Again, quite useful if we want to present something in a sequence and say things, what, what they can do. So that's really showing you what the structure of a document is. If you look at a, 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 a newspaper or things, something like that, this is the sort of things that you see all the time, a heading and paragraphs. And in a report, you might have numbered lists. So this set of simple markup tags is really all we need pr to produce a very spectacular piece of work. But that's not very exciting, just producing a single page. We really now want to see the power of uh, what HTML really can do. What is this hypertext markup language? Hypertext means the linking of your page to something else. And in particular, that something else can be out there on the Internet. So here's a link to the BBC homepage. 
and I'm going to show you now how we actually can make that link live. They're called anchors and there's several of these and they're basically hypertext reference links so here I've typed in the keyword href but the at the tag is an a tag meaning an anchor and this is hypertext reference and it's going to where's it going to go to uh, it's going to go to basically bbc.co.uk and notice the name of the website is put in quotations there the URL to the website is put in quotations there and here again I need to switch that anchor tag off so I've switched it on the a switched it on and the slash a switched it off the hypertech reference says this is the BBC website link there and the, the words the BBC home page will be shown in the very very familiar at the bottom of the page there will be shown in the very familiar uh, blue text that you get when you look at these sorts of things in, in linked up uh, um, when everything is linked up on the web so let's go back into here again and just look at the last piece of text I've got at the bottom here looks like a very long URL doesn't it but it's uh, to a very simple site it's to the Umpa University site and it's actually you can see on the end the word JPEG there this is a link to an image so I'm, this is a, and gives me the opportunity to just show you how we can bring in some multimedia into this work. And the tag is image. Now I said at the beginning, mostly the tags are in pairs, but the image tag is what's called a self-closing tag. It does everything by itself with inside its angle brackets. So this is a, uh, an image and it's got a source and the source equals and again the source name it's like a, a URL and it's it's in it's enclosed in quotation marks there it is closed in quotation marks and then I close my tag and it's closed with a forward slash angle bracket so my angle bracket closes the the whole tag down but there's no slash image closing tag it's self closing so here we have an image included in my uh, website and now if I have a look at everything, you see I've got my text at the top, my ordered list, my BBC homepage link there. You can see it's it's clicking on live, and there's my there's my image I've just brought in. Now, periodically, of course, don't forget to save your work, just like when you're doing things on word processing packages and things like that. Don't forget to save. And when I click save, of course, this web page has now been saved. So this is my demo page. Uh, here's the top part up here, the, the little pen I typed. There's the heading, there's the text, there's the list, and down the bottom is my image. Now, basically, this is all private. This is all private. So before we finish, we need to share it with somebody, and in particular, your tutor. So if I click on the share button up here, the little blue button, this will allow me to start thinking about who I can share this with. Um, this is under the, the heading of managed site and you can do a lot of lot of things with your website but we only want to think about sharing it for the moment here's the URL again this was given to us at the beginning when we typed it in if you remember and uh, there it is again that's what you need to make a copy of to put into your scripts and or give it or email it to your tutor or whoever needs a, a, to have access to this now look here it says right away this site is private only you can access it now we're going to change that just click change and all we need to do is just to alter this access rights here this says anyone with the web link anyone at the university with the link so when you post uh, put this link into a uh, tutor marked assignment or send the link to somebody only they can see it within the open university nobody in the outside world has got access to this website so I just click save and uh, that's me finished and the website now is produced it's got all the right sort of things in it and uh, basically people can now have access to it so I've changed it here so anybody with the link can have access to it and this link here will allow me to go back to my my website so here it is my website and I've now shared this with the outside world well that's the end of the tutorial uh, more support material can be found on my my Google site website and there is the URL. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you.